Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the session about uh, how we can speed up our uh, development while working with Java and containers. And before jumping into the slides, uh, just a quick poll. How many of you are working with containers actually, like either in development or production? Cool. And how many of you like enjoying their development and their daily life work, in this, especially in development mode with containers? OK, that's kind of 15%. OK, cool. So a quick introduction about me, I'm Mohammed. I work for a DevOps company in Morocco called Xab. And if you have any question, probably after the conference, uh, the easiest way to reach me is Twitter. But if you are not a Twitter fan, feel free to send me an email. So if we look at our development workflow and how we work in a daily basis, we can split uh, our development workflow into four major phases. So the first one is we introduce changes to our code base, either introducing new features or fixing a bug. Then once we reach a certain satisfaction with our code, we build our code into an artifact. And in the context of Java, this is like using one of our favorite build tools, either Maven or Gradle. So once we build our artifacts, we deploy it into application server. And in the context of uh, microservices, we use now fat jars with embedded Tomcat. And finally, we do some primitive tests. And by, pr by tests here, I mean like neither unit testing or integration testing or all of that. I mean the verification that we do using like viewing the logs, calling, interaction with browser, and so on and so forth. But when containers came, they changed the way we develop, architect, and deploy our application to become the executable of the cloud. However, containers doesn't necessarily make our development life easier. They added kind of a layer of uh, complexity and make like, uh, our development, our daily life, a less more enjoyable. And if we look our, in a typical daily life in the context of container, we see like we need to uh, type all this command to make modification and then try it and to see like the changes that we made, if they are working or not. And let's, let's actually see that in, in an actual example. So I have here a small application, which is actually a simple Hero World application that's uh, up in a stream and print Hello World. So if we want to deploy this application, so I need to change my workspace, so, okay. And so I need to build my image, and my Docker file is basically a multi-stage Docker file, so I build my image using Maven, and then I copy the fat jar into my file, my production image, keeping it, keeping it clean without the unnecessary build files. So I already built the image, and it's quickly to build it. And then I need to deploy this application into my Kubernetes cluster. So I'm using Docker for desktop, or you can use like Minikube or any local uh, Kubernetes uh, environment. So to deploy it, I Kubernetes apply, and I have a folder here which have like a deployment uh, .yaml, which describe how I want to deploy my application. So the application is already deployed, and to verify if it is effectively deployed, so we verify the pods. One pod is actually running. We verify if everything works fine, and for that, we verify the, the locks. And we see that the application effectively uh, started. And we curl to see if the changes are there, and we see that the application shows us if each one second hello world example. Now, let's see that I want to introduce a new changes. Let's take, for example, that my boss is as Vox Day's microservice, and he wanna express that, and instead of showing hello world, he wanna like say, hey, can we put hello Voxed microservices? Okay, services, come on. So, to introduce these little new changes, we need to rebuild our image. So for that, we do the same old thing, Docker build. But now, it will take kind of forever, since it needs to rebuild my application, run Maven again, and so on and so forth. So I'm not going to, 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 to demonstrate it, because, because of this false dependency that uh, Dockerfile introduced. So when I changed the layer before, Everything that comes afterward needs to be rebuilt and re-executed. That's one of the problems that we have with, like, while working with containers and Docker in general. So if we go back to our typical day life, 
we, if we label them and try to tag them, we see that there are five main categories or stages. So we build our application using our favorite uh, build tool, we containerize it, we push it into a, like a registry, because if we have like a remote uh, development cluster, it needs to uh, pull those images, and then we deploy it into our uh, cluster, and then we connect to see if everything's work fine. But the problem is, these are not the things that excite us, the developers. What really excites us is are mainly, mainly two things. We need to introduce new changes, develop them, and we need to test and verify that the changes we introduce work, works according to expectation. And one way we can improve the way we work with containers is basically to understand the problems that working with con containers introduce. So for the build and containerize step, there are a couple of issues while working with containers. The first thing is when we build our images using uh, Docker, which is the new artifact, using like containers, which is the new uh, artifact of the clouds, the builds using containers take, necessary, like, take generally longer than when building it with our local machine. And there are some tips and tricks to improve that, but it generally takes uh, longer. There are probably more using the fat jar, and the fat jar contains everything your application needs. That means dependencies, its uh, resources, and then the code that uh, we frequently change. But frequently and normally, we change only one part, one small part, which is our code, and we don't need to rebuild the whole fat jar and then copy it. And this introduces a problem that everything is uh, in containers is layered and layers are file system. So whenever we introduce a small changes in our uh, container, we build a new layer, and this layer needs to be pushed and pulled into the registry. There are some issues with the Docker builder, the current one, and that's because in our Docker file, we, can't, we cannot execute the comments in, uh, in parallel, even if they are completely uh, unrelated. There are some caching issues, as I demonstrated in my demo, since, uh, if we change one layer, everything that comes after the layer needs to be rebuilt and executed. Historically, there are no volumes with the Docker build command, and that's for security reasons. And finally, there is no safe way to access private resources. And one hack we do normally is to mount using Docker run command, mount our local repository with uh, with the local repository and container, but this have the drawback that it introduced, like it polluted our uh, local workspace with unnecessary root files. So the ideal scenario for us, especially the Java developers, is to use the same good old tools that we are familiar with, like, like Maven and Gradle, and to build this new unit of deployment, which is container. And Luckily, there, has, there are many tools that we can use for that. And in my talk today, I will highlight one, one cool project from Google, which is JIP. So JIP is, is, is a cool project from Google. It's a pure Java block plugin available in both Maven and Gradle. And it enables us to build uh, containers, container images without the need of a Docker file and without the need of a Docker daemon and solid in our machine. So what JIP basically does is something similar to what's in this Docker file. So since JIP integrates with our build tool, it understands our application, and it separates it into multiple layers, putting the layers that are more likely to change at the top, at the bottom, sorry, and the layers that are less likely to change at the bottom at the top, sorry. So the layers that are less likely to change at the top, which are the dependencies and our resources file, and the layers that are more likely to change, which, are, which is our code uh, at the bottom. So let's see it actually in action. And I have another project here, which is exactly the same project that I was uh, using. But this time is using Google Jib. So instead of using, uh, just missed, switch the directory quickly, spam is Jib. But instead of using uh, Docker to build my container, I will use uh, JIP. So let me clean first my directory. So QRM, this will delete everything in my local cluster and keep it clean. And to build my container image, I no longer need to call Docker for that, but I simply need to call uh, Maven, clean compile, and then JIP build. And what it will do, basically, it will compile my application, for, uh, application first, and then it will call jib goal to build my application and push it into my registry. And if we take a look at my maven there, my, my pom.xml, you will see that I, I added uh, jib login into my pom file, and then 
uh, integrate it into a Maven lifecycle and like I associated it with the with the package goal. So if I run MVN clean package, it will actually do the same thing. And if we take a look at our target directory, we see that a new file uh, appeared, which has like the JIP cache, which contains all uh, the caches needed by JIP, and which is like it contains some directories which are the layers, and those are basically the same layers that we find with uh, with Docker. So they are basically a file system that contains our uh, application. And if we want to like dive into what's inside our generated uh, container, so uh, like I, I, as, as I mentioned there, so I have I said that the image I want to push it into the Google Cloud registry and the application I call it like SBMS Jib. So there is a cool tool called it Command Line Tool is Dive that enables us to deep dive into our image and understand basically what layers uh, is composed of. So what what Dive is actually doing? So it's it's fetching the image from the registry and then it's parsing it and it shows us like in a nice uh, interface how application like what are the differences the files introduce it between each uh, each stage. So JIB by default uses uh, as a base image a core project from Google which is the Strollet container image and those images basically contain the contains nothing except your the runtime dependencies and a small uh, Linux distribution. So if I go here and let me zip this. Okay, so here we have the base, and so all these are basically my uh, the base image coming from Google, coming from Google container, uh, Google Distrolist images, and here we can see that. Uh, okay, let me see it. Uh, okay, okay, okay. So, okay, so here we can see that Jib added uh, the dependencies. I think I need to, okay, the app folder. Okay, so we can see here that JIP added the dependencies, then added static resources, then added our class files, which is the code that we wrote, and that helps to speed up the development process since only the changes that are made in our code are sent to, uh, to the registry and also helps to ensure reproducibility. So if I go back to our slide, there are many ways that we can build container images using JIB. So the one I showed is JIB build goal, which basically build container image and send them directly to registry. We can use JIB docker build, which make call to docker daemon to build the container image, and you can save it uh, locally as you mainly use in uh, Docker. And finally, we can use JIP build target, which basically build a tar that you can load into your docker daemon and build your image. And JIB is configurable, it's pluggable. There are many config that enable you to build uh, your customizable uh, image depending on your needs. So with JIB, we succeeded to uh, like minimize the steps that we can do to build our image, but can we do better? Can we uh, like focus only on the part that interests us, which is development and testing? And for that, we need to simplify development. Uh, sorry, we need to simplify deploy deployment to our Kubernetes cluster. And for that, there is another cool project from Google, which is Scaffold. And Scaffold is a command line tool that takes care of deploying your changes into your, your, your Kubernetes cluster. So what it basically do, it detects changes on your code, it builds an artifact, it tags it, it pushes it into the registry, and then deploy your artifact into uh, your Kubernetes cluster. If I go back to my demo here, so I have a small YAML file, which is scaffold.yaml, which is basically the configuration file that uh, configure uh, scaffold. And here I have two basic configuration. So I use JIP for the build, as mentioned here. And for deployment, I uh, use kubectl command. So if I try to run JIP, uh, scaffold, sorry. So scaffold comes with a lot of uh, command that enables you to do a lot of stuff, but the command that will change your life is scaffold dev, basically. So what scaffold dev will do, it will compile your application, generate uh, your image using like as specified in your uh, scaffold.yaml file, your configuration file, it will push it if necessary, and then it will deploy it into your local cluster and even show you the logs. So. If I, so uh, as mentioned in, in the logs, the application is running and, uh, and the application is uh, running and the test like succeeded. If I want to introduce a new change, changes, 
things are much more easier now. So if I change it to hello Vox at microservices, once I hit control save, the JIP, uh, automatic, uh, scaffold automatically de detect the changes, build the application, uh, tag the artifacts, and then deploy it into my cluster. And if I run, OK, now it's, it's now it started. So you can see that the changes takes effect, and then I can focus on the parts that excites me, which are basically introducing new changes in my uh, repository, uh, uh, in my code, and then verifying those changes. So that was only for development purposes and for, more lo for only local development. But what happens if I have an, a remote development cluster? So I need to make changes to my YAML files, and that means uh, to my deployment and service YAML file. What's happening if I have more environments? So that needs, I need to introduce another files. The problem with YAML configuration file for Kubernetes is that they are tied to specific version and specific environment. So the more environment, environment you have for your, uh, in your, for your Kubernetes cluster, the more YAML files configuration you need to introduce. And the problem is 90% or 95% of those files contain the same configuration. So we need some way to customize uh, our configuration and then change only the part that needed to be changed. And there are other uh, two core projects that works uh, perfect with uh, Scaffold, which are Helm. And Helm is it's a package manager for uh, Kubernetes, and it was yesterday uh, a nice application. Uh, nice presentation about Helm. So basically, Helm is, is composed of two, uh, two parts. The first one is Helm client that you interact with in your uh, daily development. And then Tyler, which basically uh, sits into your Kubernetes cluster and deploy your changes. So Helm uh, charts in Helm are basically our application. So you can make your own custom charts, or you can download it from uh, the charts uh, produced by the community. You can depend on other charts. You can deploy multiple versions of the same charts. And the part that interests us is uh, actually configuration over values. So I have a demo here. Uh, and I will change my scaffold. Instead of using kubectl for deploying my application, I will use Helm. And there are a couple of configuration, and I'm specifying where the value, where the Helm configuration directory is, and where are the values for my configuration. So I have a Helm directory here. It contains like uh, the same files that I had uh, previously with kubectl, but this time I have variables in my YAML file, and those the values of those vi variables are specified in another another file, which is values.yaml. So what Helm basically does, it takes those values and then replaces the variables and sends the new configuration file to kubectl to be uh, deployed. So once I introdu introduce the, ch the changes, so automatically scaffold detect the changes, rebuild the application, and deploy it using Helm this time. So that was Helm. And there is another project, which is now integrated into kubectl by default. And it's Kind of the default customization that was introduced by the Kuber by, that was adopted by the Kubernetes community, which is customized. And customize is basically a command line tool for Kubernetes customization. It takes another approach, which is basically the use YAMLs, uh, YAML files to deploy our application. And basically, what you will have is you will have a base uh, directory that will contain all the, the common the configuration of all of your, of your cluster, and then you will have overlays with directories for each, uh, for each environment, let's say local development, uh, remote development, staging, production, and so on and so forth. And then the patch or the merge of these two configuration gives uh, the final configuration file that, that will be deployed into your uh, cluster. So uh, Scaffold is not only for a uh, Hello World example. So I have a small application here, which is the pit, the pit store application uh, by the Micronauts guys. And basically, this project contains a lot of microservices uh, with different languages, some written in Groovy, some written in Java. And the front end is uh, using React. And we can actually use uh, Customize to deploy uh, my application. and. Uh, as I've explained, so for customized, we have the 
sorry, the base uh, folder, which contains uh, the common configuration between all my environments. And then I have the overlays, which contains specific, uh, specific configuration for, for each environment. And the merge of those two things will uh, be the final configuration that will be sent to, Kuber, uh, to Kuber, my Kubernetes cluster. So deploying this uh, application will take some. OK. What happened here? OK, now it's good. So deploying the applications that have uh, many uh, microservices will take some time, and they have like four minute lifts uh, waiting for the application to be deployed. I'm happy to take any uh, question you have. So to sum it up before that, so scaffold is blockable, uh, customizable for local and remote clusters. So, uh, basically, you can use uh, mini builders to build your application. Uh, I showed like Docker and Jib, but you can use Bazel as well. For tagging artifacts, which, uh, it supports many, uh, many ways to, to tag your artifacts. It puts your artifacts into the registry automatically, and it deploy uh, your application using either kubectl, Helm, or Customize. So if you have any question, please feel free and wait in for the application to be deployed. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yep, yep. Here, like, instead of uh, building the application using Docker daemon, it will use Jib to build the application. And it's actually, if the application, uh, if you have Docker installed in your machine, it will automatically uh, build the container image using the Docker Jib, uh, the Jib build Docker uh, using the Docker daemon. If not, it will use the Jib build without the need of Docker daemon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I'm, uh, here I'm using uh, Gradle, and let's take, yeah, so uh, I'm using Gradle here, and if we take a look at my application, you can see that I'm using actually Jib. So I'm specifying the image, uh, the image where I want to like pu push the image, and the credential helper. So the credential helper are the credential that needed to, uh, to log into my uh, registry. Any other questions? Yeah. One question in, from your experience. Is JIB reliable? I mean, it, it is developed well enough and supported? It, yeah. Uh, JIB is like evolving at a, at a rapid pace. And like many, there are many companies that are adopting it. And it helps like to speed up uh, the build, pro uh, like the development process. And it works really fine for the microservices context. Of course, if we are using like legacy application, it will be hard to, for JIB to like, split up your application and, and so on and so forth. So for, for microservice uh, architecture application, which is the case of, uh, of this conference and, and so, uh, it is it's really nice and it helps to speed the development without the overhead of using containers and, and Docker. So it basically comes with best practices in mind implemented in JIB. So you don't need to worry anymore about implementing best practices to build your container image. It automatically uh, generated it for you uh, with, 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 a, with a single comment. Welcome. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, so uh, I have a small application here, and if I check my scaffold YAML file, so YAML either build your application or if your application supports whole hot reload. Uh, as my React front-end application, it's, it will not build the container each and every time you introduce changes. It will basically sync your files. So if I go to my uh, front-end, which, OK, so it's home.js and add new modification. So it will sync changes, and it will comp compile it with uh, Node, and it will like, automatically hot reload it in my uh, in my browser. So no need to build the container image. It will sync the files, uh, which is like a good thing with well working with, with containers to have this hot reload feature. Any other questions? So I'm out of time. Thank you very much. And they'll be around if you have any other questions. Thank you.